Is this an opportunity to buy the value dip? Well, I think you have to look on a stock-by-stock -stock basis. If you look at the S&P overall, it's 18 times. And if you looked at the Russell 2000 and 2500, they're roughly 18.7 and 19 and a half. So you can't just buy them homogeneously. You have to find individual stocks, but I still think they're out there. Well, just before we dive into those individual stocks, uh, Scott, talk to me about how overpriced you think the overall market is at a moment. Is it, is it flashing very large warning signs to you to, to sell or just uh, medium sized? No, we always stay fully invested because our average PE is about 11 or 12 in the portfolio. But, you know, the historic norm since 1946 is about a 16 multiple. There are a couple things here, though. Corporate earnings are probably going to be flat to down 3% in the first quarter. And I'm being generous. I'm giving it 5% for the whole year at $159 worth of earnings. So the jury is out on how strong corporate earnings are going to be. We still haven't resolved the trade issues. And real GDP is slowing both worldwide, roughly 2.9% according to the World Bank, and probably 2.1 or 2.2 based on the Federal Reserve of Atlanta. So there's some warning signs. It's not markedly overpriced like in the tech bubble of 2000, but still it's a couple multiple points expensive. But, but what about the Fed's recent pivot? Does that make you a little bit more relaxed uh, overall with the valuations we've got at the moment? Yes. Well, you know, the uh, 10 year right now is about 2.5 percent. Um, not going to raise rates this year, but I wish that the president wouldn't politicize the Fed. I don't think necessarily we should do quantitative easing or cut 25 basis points yet. I mean, inflation somewhere around 1.9 to 2.1 percent, which is around the Fed goal. But, yes, it's going to be accommodative. I don't see any increases in the Fed, Fed funds rate during 2019. Stock, I want to go back. Scott, I want to go back to this, um, this idea of value investing right now. And I realize that, you know, you're saying don't look at it broad-based. You've got to specifically pick stocks here. But the fact that we do, we did have this Fed pivot, the fact that we do have rates low. You have Larry Kudlow coming out and say, saying he doesn't think rates will rise in the foreseeable future, maybe never again in his lifetime. That has certainly been something that has helped sort of reignite the run we've seen in growth stocks. So why would that not continue to work if we do continue to see rates low? Well, I agree with you. I looked at the FANG stocks here to date, and of course, they're all up 16% to 30% plus on the year. And a lot of it's just through ETFs, because there were record inflows and in equities in March. But the bottom line is, ultimately, it's a greater fool theory buying companies with 50 and 100 multiples. You know, we've seen this movie before from 1999 to 2000. And I know that value has systematically lagged the last few years. When we talk about value, we're not buying dead companies selling below book. We're buying companies that have double-digit growth, but instead of paying 20-plus multiples, we're able to buy them at much lower PEs. Like what? But I do... Th well, I'll give you a couple. The first one is Synex. It's a company that's IT distribution, and it builds servers and integrates uh, the things for the cloud, for Amazon and Facebook. The stock is selling at about 8.8 .8 times this year's expected earnings with double-digit growth and earnings per share in top line. It doesn't get much respect. It earns 16 percent return on equity. They made an acquisition last year, and I had the management in this week, and they promised they're going to knock $400 million worth of debt off the balance sheet with free cash flow generation of $400 million plus. So it's a surrogate play on things like cloud computing. Um, another company, there's also a surrogate play on everything that's going out there in Silicon Valley is SIVB. It's called SVB Financials, the old Silicon Valley bank shares. This is a company that legitimately grows um, net interest income about 15 percent. Earnings per share um, will grow at about 12, 13 percent. It's selling at an 11 and a half multiple. Return on equity is almost 21 percent. They earn 1.7 percent on assets. And it's very clean. It's reserved three to one on non-performing assets and other real estate owned. So it's a very cheap stock. Um, they have a you know, bulletproof type of balance sheet. Over 35 percent of the assets are in U.S. Treasuries and uh, yeah. agency types of cash. And, you know, it's a surrogate play because half of their lending goes to VCs like Kleiner Perkins and Sequoia, and they work with private mm -hmm. equity. So it's not so much an early stage that they loan directly. They loan to the PCs, the, 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 the VCs in this area. And if you look, 
they've had very low loss yep. provisions, you know, two tenths to three tenths of one percent historically. So it's an 11.6 mm -hmm. multiple. It's awfully cheap when you consider that the market multiple is 18, and this is a legitimately, you know, good double-digit grower. Yeah.